what I'm going to do today is design a greetings card. Now the greeting card I'm going to make is for Christmas. As well as I'm making this, is Christmas is coming up. So it's going to be for Christmas. But you can use the same uh, design principles for this for any sort of greeting cards, i.e. Like birthdays, Easter, Thanksgiving, etc. I'm using a width of 26 by 18. I'm for the height of centimetres and the resolution of 300. Now what I'm going to design first off is a bleed. Now, if you don't know what a bleed is, I'll put a link to Wikipedia, or look up yourself in Wikipedia, um, what that actual bleed is. Now a bleed is an area of your document that is discarded after trimming. It's an error trap. When you print things back to back, i.e. duplex printing, they never marry up, never. No matter how good the printing technology is or how good the printers are, they're always slightly off. That could be by a millimetre or even up to five millimetres off. So what you do is you have something called a bleed to your design. Whatever you put into the bleed, you don't need in your final design. So you never put any typography in there or any, like say, your barcodes or anything like that. Nothing of that ilk goes into the design. It's just stuff that you don't mind being trimmed off at the end. Now to add a bleed, there's lots of ways of doing it within Photoshop, but this is a nice simple way. So we start a new document. Now from our rulers, if you can't see the rulers, just get a view, show rulers. We drag in guidelines to the edges of the pages all around. So just drag the guidelines in and they will snap to the edges of the pages. Now we grab another guideline and we put it into the middle. Now it should automatically snap, there you go, snaps to the middle of the page as well. So there's nothing complicated there. Next up, we go to image and we go to canvas size. And make sure relative is turned on. Now, a good size for a bleed is usually th two to five millimeters. I'm going to go for sorry two, yeah two to five millimeters. I'm going to go to 0 0.3 centimeters, but I want it for both sides, so that's 0 0.6. And I also want it on the height as well. Remember 0 0.3 for one, but I want it for top and bottom, so it takes it to 0 0.6. So 0 0.6, and it extends our page like so. So this is our bleed area. This is the part of the design that will get cut off when we do our final print. Um, next up, let's start making our design. So first off, I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to call it Sky. Now the design is going to be fairly simple. That's not what it's all about today. It's not going to be a fantastic design, but it'll be adequate. And as you can indicate, this is going to be Sky. So I'm going to fill this with a nice shiny blue, not too bright. I'm just going to do edit fill, foreground colour, do OK. Control D for deselect. I'm going to add a new layer, call this snow. Now I'm going to use the circular ellipse tool. And I'm going to make sure it's on pixels, I fill it in with colour. I'm going to make sure we're using white. I'm just going to draw objects down the bottom here to I get a sort of effect I'm after. Bit circular there. I, th I think that'll do. So there's our snow background. Next up, I'm gonna get a file open. I'm gonna open this deer image. Now, if you look at the um, description of this video, yeah, I'll show you where to get these images from. They're all royalty free. You can use them as much as you like. Now, magic wand. Click on the background. I'm using a tolerance level of 32. It's the magic number for my the magic wand. Hold my shift key down, and I can keep adding to my selection. Once I've got it all selected, I'm going to use a mask on this, believe it or not. Now, if this happens, it masks out the wrong bit. I I want this one to show. In CS5, and I believe it's in CS4 as well. You can in the masks palette, you can just click on invert, and it swaps it around again. Nice and simple for us. I'm going to drag that layer into our main design. Um, move tool, we can move it around, place it to where we want it. Remember, we don't want it into the bleed. Remember this bit down here? We want it to be above the bleed. Because remember, anything that goes into this bleed area will be cut off or trimmed by your printer. So we arrange it as we wish. I'm going to rename that layer to deer and resize as necessary. I know this is a little bit big because I want to write Merry Christmas above it. So I'm going to move it round about there. Happy with that. Now I'm going to add a new layer. And I'm going to call it Nose. I'm going to add a nose to him. I 
Rudolph, basically. I'll go to my paintbrush. I select a size I like. Make sure it's nice and soft. That's going to be a little bit bigger than that. So, yeah, I think that's about right. Yep. Now we want a nice red. And I'm going to click on our man. There we go. Once I've done that, I'm going to swap to white. Make a nice small square and change that to make its highlight. There we go. Now what I'm going to do now is link both of those two layers, the nose and the deer. The reason being, if I now use my move tool, I can drag them around and they both stay together. And if I resize, for example, they both resize at the same time. Okay. So I'll just resize. Next up, type tool. Type tool, I'm just going to write Merry Christmas across the top here. I'm going to use white as the colour. Um, so I'm going to use white as my colour. Type up here, type in Merry Christmas. Move tool, move as required, and resize as required as well. So I'm going to go for a much bigger time. Let's go here up to 72. Uh, and move it across. Now remember, like I said, not into the bleed. The red part, or well, where the guideline is, that's our edge of our actual paper. Now to make this a little bit easier to read, we'll stand out a bit more. I'm going to add a simple stroke to it. My stroke I'm going to leave as default. It'll be black of three points on most people's systems. Just say OK. But I'm also going to add a drop shadow as well. Very, very simple stuff. Makes it stand out just that tad more. Next up, I'm going to add some snow to this. So I need to add a new layer. I'm going to call it snow. I go back to my paintbrush. Now if I click here, and then click here, we can load more paintbrushes. So I'm going to load the assorted paintbrushes and then append it to the ones we've already got open. Now if you scroll down to the bottom, you should see you have a snowflake in here now. And that one I'm going to use to make some snowflakes. So I'll make sure I'm using white, and I'm going to click around my image to add some snowflakes. Now this doesn't matter if it goes into the bleak. In fact, it's quite a good idea to actually do so, because it's going to be cut off, it'll match up, it doesn't matter. Um, now I'm going to make different sizes of the snowflakes. If you don't already know, an easy or quick way to resize your paintbrush or any brush in Photoshop are the square bracket keys next to the return or enter key on your keyboard. Right, when I'm happy, I'm going to add a couple in here just in case, I'm going to move that to below our Merry Christmas. I, we don't want to go over the top of this making it harder to read, so below our Merry Christmas. But we do want it still in front of our reindeer. So we can have a couple of big ones, say for example. Just going onto him like so. And even down here we could have a couple. Just to indicate he's actually you know, in the snow. Um, sorry about that. Next up, we're going to look at just placing a rear design on here. So I'm going to go to file open. And I've actually got this smiley little design. So I'm going to do the same thing as usual. Quickly copy that onto the back of our design. Minimize him. Resize as required. Right, so this is the back of our card. So front of the card, back of the card. Now, that's it really. That's a really quick, very, very fast, simple way to make a design. Next up, you'd use the same uh, layout to make the inside of the card. So for example, I've already done one for the inside. Now, let me show you them both on the screen at the same time. Okay. Whoops, sorry, wrong one. I'll just minimize. There we go. So this is the inside of the card. This is the outside of the card. And this is the fold, remember? So exactly the same thing. That'd be the inside. So this would be printed on one side, that would be printed on the other. Once the printer's done all that, they will cut along these edges for you automatically and they will put a fold down the centre one. 
Now most printers or professional printers you take that to will do that all for you. So there's nothing to worry about. Um, some of them are going to ask you for this in a PDF though. They're going to say, I want this in a PDF, not a Photoshop file. You know, I want this in a PDF. So all you need to do is make sure you have Acrobat Pro installed on your machines, which most of you should have got with Photoshop anyway. Go to File Print. And Print Dialog will come up as usual. But make sure you select your PDF printer. Now that doesn't actually print, it will convert the document to a PDF. Once you've done that, select your print settings as normal. But over here it says Color Management. Change that to Output. And now you need to turn on these crop marks and that so the printer knows where to cut it or cut your design down. So I would turn on my corner crops and my center crops. Also go down to here because you need to know or need to tell it where the bleed actually is. Although we made the bleed ourselves in Photoshop, it was only a guide for us, so you need to tell it now how big the bleed is. So remember I made mine three millimeters, I'm just doing okay. You see these crops here actually moved into the design a bit. Then you would just print that and it will say where do you want me to save this. So what you end up doing is save this as a PDF and once that's done you do it again to the other document and take those to the printer itself. So for example it's saying where do you want me to save this PDF? I'll just bang it on the desktop for now. Oops, sorry. So guard one. And then you would do the same thing for the inside of your card as well. So we'd print this, convert it to a PDF. So you'd use exactly the same settings. So PDF da 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 da. Make sure your registration marks are, make sure your corner marks are, make sure your bleed is set to what you use, which is three in this example, and we'd print that as well. Again, it asks us to say it. I'll call this card two and save. Now we have our two separate documents, but what we want to do is actually combine those together. A quick way of doing that is just to select them both, right click, and then select Combine Supported Files in Acrobat. This window should pop up to your screen. I'll tell it to combine the files for you. And now you will have a two page document of your card. So we've got the inside and we have the outside. So you take this now to the professional printers and they will print it, crop it, and put the crop marks in it for you. So basic design, very, very simple to make. Now remember, you can apply this to any sort of designs, so happy birthdays, you know, New Year's, etc. The quality is down to you really, how good your design is. I hope you enjoyed. Have fun.